Hello everybody. Welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to jump into Marmoset Tool Bag 4. And what I'd like to go over are the brushes. These little brushes at the bottom. And what I did here was open up one of the scenes that come with the preset library. And we can go into our layers. There's a texture project preset with it. I'm going to make a new paint layer. And just to give an example of these little brushes, you can create little like rivets and stuff on your model. So I'm gonna click one, and if you push this little window, it'll open up the properties for it. So we'll click one, and you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, I could probably choose a better one so you can see a little bit more what it does. Let's click this one right here. We'll turn off albedo and metalness and we'll click and kind of see what it does and create some of the detail. Now, I was kind of going around and I was trying to figure out what if I don't want these, their custom ones, I want my own. So I started doing a little bit reverse engineering and kind of taking apart what I'm seeing and what's going on. So you can start to see how one of these brushes are made. So we'll go ahead and start looking at one area here and that'll be the properties and material properties. And these are all the brush properties for this. And for anybody new to 3D, each one of these properties translate into what you see here roughness, the normal map, ambient occlusion, and your displacement. They all feed into this brush. And we have an alpha that's telling it to cut out from the edges. And it looks like when you kind of go into the, to see the map, you can see that they kind of blurred the edges too, to give a little bit more softer edge. So going from this we're, we're gonna take apart what we what we can learn from this and how if you're in another program what's going on so we can see that this is a lower quality at the bottom uh, this is at 256 by 256 this tells our size and and pixels how many pixels eight so it's fairly low for this alpha and you don't really need that much information if you're trying to use it just to cut out the alpha for this and if you go into these other ones these are 256 the normal map uh, 256 and ambient occlusion 256 I think I did mine I did a little test I did it at 512 so as long as you you can always go lower once you create the material so what I'd like to do is kind of create my own and what I did was I used ZBrush and looking at Kind of like other tutorials or other videos of how other folks make their little cutouts uh, i decided to go that route so let's jump into zbrush and find out what we need so we 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 know what we're going to need or a few of the passes as we go along and we'll grab some as we go so i'm going to show a little bit of what i created and how i apply it inside of marmoset so let's jump into zbrush and I'll kind of show a little more or less uh, one of the brushes that I started to make and then we'll apply it to the scene in a bit. So let's jump over. So now we're in ZBrush and what I like to show is kind of this Boolean model that I created here. I started with an actual and I can just kind of reverse back. I started with the actual just flat plane and I made a thickness to it. Using the tools that are inside of ZBrush, you have now uh, Instrument Mesh Boolean, and that's what I kind of use to Boolean out pieces here and there. So I started out with this piece, and I kind of subtracted out what we got. And you can actually see, if I were to move it up and down, what it does. So that's one, and I added a little cylinder in the middle and I added this little gear thing right here 
It wasn't anything too fancy. If I were to add another piece, just kind of show you more or less how it was created. Uh, like go Boolean, and we can append a new object. And so if I wanted to add something at the bottom, we can actually add a little bit more detail, and you can have that in there. But for the example, I've already exported out the images to kind of show more or less what I needed. So if you see on the side, I've already started kind of exporting things that I needed for this uh, brush to be created. So since I knew it was gonna be square, the document is actually at 512 by 512 and that kind of helps to export out an even image. And let's go ahead and get this kind of zoomed in there. So as you render, you'll get your passes that are listed out under your BPR render passes. I could go through the ZBrush to Photoshop and this will also give you some different outputs. You got your albedo, your AO, and this also works too. It's just for the little testing that I did. I didn't really, it, I didn't need to go that route because this will give you all, all your lights if you want everything in there. And, Really, I just wanted the passes. So I went through BPR render passes, and this is how I have it. What you can get here is your, your depth. You can get a shadow mat. Uh, if you turn on ambient occlusion on your properties, I had turned it off for my normals. But if I were to render again, it would update it, and then you would get an ambient occlusion pass. Uh, the mask, there's nothing really to mask. For my cavity, I went down to masking and put it to flat color and then we went mask by cavity and then we can go from here or I had let me see if it was the other one I believe it was this one so let's see so that cavity mask should be in there so depending on how this is lit we go to our properties if I turn on shadows it'll probably show a little bit more detail but depending on what you're gonna need or what you want it's gonna be back and forth your, your cavity your intensity just going from there so we can export different materials out for this and we'll go ahead and jump into Photoshop showing what I saved out so if you go to each one of these you can send it send it to your folder and then save it out is what I did converted the PSDs to something like a JPEG just for this testing purposes I didn't really um, get too deep with it I just wanted to kind of run through it and just see if it would kind of copy over and I figured that since I was gonna go through this test to carry it over to Marmoset and see what I need um, I figured I'd just share it with everybody else it's always learning and growing as we go and so different methods so what I did I'm gonna jump into Photoshop stop this video because pretty much got the model and you can do any kind of model you want you can add more detail less detail as you bullying it out and you don't have to use ZBrush you can use other programs and you can probably get a similar result uh, as long as you just kind of keep in mind that you're gonna look straightforward and you're gonna use this as a brush as more of a stamp into the model the more information the better I noticed on Marmoset said it had like a um, a roughness pass with a little bit of wear and tear on the sides but for what I needed this or more what I wanted to try to do uh, this is perfectly fine so let me jump into Photoshop and show you where I'm at on there so as you can see laid out in front of you I've got each little pass that I've rendered out of ZBrush to put back into Marmoset so we can actually use this as a brush the one thing that I did have to do a little bit more by hand is that I created a like a little alpha mat for this and so what all I did was just kind of magic wand the gray and then put the white on the 
reveal and then the black where I don't want to be anything to be seen. And so you can kind of see back and forth. My cavity uh, actually worked okay on this one uh, previously in ZBrush, I don't know. I had something turned on to where it wasn't showing up, but either way, this is um, kind of like the basic workflow. Exporting out a normal map. Uh, this was more for color, the composite. And since I have it cut out, and I probably could have used like something a little bit more uh, detailed to get more information into the image. But for what I wanted, it was, this is just a little test. I'll probably make more as I go along. I just wanted to play around with the, the idea of making new brushes for Marmoset and start saving them out and creating a, a small library to get something going. And hopefully, you know, as things go by, more people will make more brushes inside of there. So let's go ahead and jump into Marmoset and apply these little passes to this. So now we're jumping back into the tool bag and we're going to go ahead and apply those brushes that we created out of ZBrush onto this. And I'm going to go ahead and change this material. Give it a little something more neutral. That way we can see what we're going to create here. If I were to go into my brushes, you can double click and load the presets in there. So we're going to create a new paint layer and let's go ahead and drop in our settings. So we're going to start with the alpha map and we're going to drop this in. And if I were to go ahead and click onto the model, you'll actually see, let's see I'll take this around, what happens. And it's doing the alpha. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to Albedo and I'm going to use the composite that was rendered out of ZBrush to place in here too. So the first thing you're going to notice is it doesn't look right. What we need to do is change your projection method. So we're going to change it to fit the brush so it fits within these parameters of the brush. So now when I click after there we go, I push control Z and we're going to stamp it again. And now you can start to see that the details are being stamped on the, to the model. Let's go ahead and change the hardness and up just a bit. And when I push Control Z, I accidentally took this away again. And let's click it. So now you can start to see that it's a little bit more defined. Let's go to the next one and we'll go to normal. Drop this in. And Let's go ahead and click it again. Let me raise this up. Let's see what it looks like now. So now you can start to see that the normal map is actually reacting to this. So pretty cool. You can start to rotate around. I probably need a better environment to kind of get a little bit better idea. But you can kind of see that we got we got details going on. And we can start to use this somewhere in other projects too if we start to make a little library. So let's go ahead and clear this out and let's do the next one. A bump, we can use the cavity. So the cavity was somewhat a little bit. And so if we do it, we can start to see that we're going to get a little bit more information in here. Uh, we'll go to, we can use displacement, but I've noticed that it gets a little messy. And let's go ahead and try it. So you can start to see that it's pushing into the model and actually chiseling out information for us. And so you can start to see that it looks like it's actually 3D. It's pretty neat. Um, just go ahead and clear this out. And let's go down to the last one and see what we got. Ambient occlusion. Let's see. I guess I missed that. I can turn off this place. We don't really need that. I just really wanted to kind of in there a little bit and you can start to see that the details are working uh, the bump map might not be helping the model I noticed that it's a little a little rough when I put it on there but this is actually pretty cool so now as you can see I already go in here just turn this off and you can play with these settings here and there uh, your flow your opacity your hardness and we can start to get a little bit more details on our model so we could put this here now you can see that we got something going on and it looks like you've got a lot more detail than 
originally made. So this is kind of a really quick short video of just showing uh, my process of getting my own custom brushes inside of Marmoset. What I like is that this isn't where it stops. You're going to keep making libraries and making your own brushes and making more details. And so now when you look at it, you've got more information to put on your model and you don't have to use the same um, screws and bolts that they have in their models. You can create your own kind of sci-fi cutouts to actually make more detail pop and and then you can use this with combination of these little cutouts and and it's just it's pretty neat so I just wanted to share kind of like a little breakdown of getting a, a, a temporary brush or a new brush into marmoset tool bag and hopefully this is informative um, just always learning as we go trying to get faster kind of getting bigger libraries and getting more efficient and just going from there so hopefully this helped you out so thank you for watching